Praise God, and welcome to the program. I'm Dr. Philip Miles. This program is about total healing and proclaiming that Jesus does total healing, and the healing is eternal, that it does not return back for a second time. Today, my guest is Jana Bain, and Jana Bain uh, has a miracle that happened in her life with respect to a kidney stone. But before we go into that, I would like to talk a little bit about believing before receiving your healing. There are four cases as a minimum that I will talk about today in the Bible where people believed first before they were healed. The first one is the woman with the issue of blood in the fifth chapter of Mark. The Bible clearly states that she said within herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And you notice that we, we've said in our other programs that Jesus makes people whole. It's not just what you came to ask for. He takes care of anything else that, that is there in your family, in your workplace. Uh, whatever you do, your relationships, he is there. Your finances, because he's Jehovah Jireh, the God that is more than enough. Now she had this for, uh, the lady with the issue of blood had this for a period of 12 years. And she spent all of her money on physicians and it got worse. So she heard about Jesus. Notice the word she heard, because we know that Paul says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So she heard that Jesus was coming. And so she went out into the marketplace where she knew that he was as a multitude was around him and just surrounding him, or the King James says, thronged him. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Can you imagine what would happen that people were yelling around her, unclean, unclean, as she crawled on the ground to get to him? And people were moving away because they did not want to be near an unclean person. If you touch an unclean person under the law, you would have to be away for seven days. So as she went and she touched his garment, the Bible says she felt that she was healed. Notice the order. She first believed that if she touched it, she would be healed. Then after she touched it, she felt that she was healed. And Jesus said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. That's the only person in the Bible, the only situation where Jesus called a woman daughter. And that actually represents the church, as we see from reading about Song of Solomon, where the daughters represent the church. Another incident that happened was with uh, Jairus' daughter. Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue, and that made him either a Pharisee or a Sadducee or a member of the Sanhedrin, because he was a ruler. But he said, my daughter is dying near death and is dying. But if you come, my daughter will live. So he had faith to say that before he could speak to Jesus. And he spoke to Jesus while Jesus was walking, and it interrupt, he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, you notice that Jairus was not impatient because he knew that Jesus was going to go to his house. But his servant came to him and says, don't trouble the master. Your daughter is dead. And Jesus says, only believe. And he went to the house. And when he got to the house, he took with him Peter, James, and John. And they were already there with the professional mourners crying over Jairus' daughter's death. And he said, she's only asleep. And the people began to laugh him to scorn or begin to say, why make a joke out of this? And so Jesus put them all out. There's something about the word one accord. In Acts, that's over five times in the first two or three chapters, and they were all in one accord. So he put them out before he began to minister 
to Jairus' daughter. I remember this incident happened in my home in Granada Hills in California where a man was in a wheelchair and there were 44 of us there. And the Lord had spoke to me, said that this man is going to walk. And he says quietly to me again, he says, but there are two people who do not believe. And I, with boldness of being obedient to him, because I had never seen this before myself, but I was going to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And so I asked the two people to go to the library. And I walked up to him, and since his legs were so thin, I was thinking to lay hands on his legs, but he said lay hands on his back. And I laid hands on his back, and power shot into his legs. And he got up and he walked. And there was so much joy in the room when that happened. But it's the thing of knowing that he spoke first that he's going to walk. He spoke that he is going to walk. And it helped him where that you do that first and then it happens. So with Jairus' daughter, Jesus touched her and said, Tabitha Talitha Kumi, which means um, daughter arise or damsel arise. Now Mark interpreted that because his book was written to the Romans. But this was in Aramaic what Jesus was saying. And what it really said was, woman wrapped in the word of God, I say unto thee, arise. You will see a talit sitting on the table here. And the little fringes that come off are called the, the hem. And that represents the word of God, the blue and the white and the way they tie the five knots on the prayer shawl, which is a tallit. It represents the word of God. In fact, Jesus would rebuke the Pharisees because they had extra long tassels, like we know more word than you do. But the Lord Jesus rebu rebuked them for that. So he, he, she was wrapped in the word of God. And she arose, and then she began to minister unto them. There's another case. A man that was a leper. This was after Jesus came down from being tempted by the devil. And as he came down from the mountain, the leper approached him and says, Lord, if thou wilt, heal my leprosy. Cleanse me. So by him saying cleanse me, he knew and believed that Jesus could cleanse him. And Jesus answered, I will. Be thy clean. Be thou clean and go and show yourself to the priests. They always have to go show themselves because they were declared unclean. And you would have to be clean and declared clean by the priest in the temple. So again, we have belief before you feel or see your healing. The last incident would be a man in Lystra, where Paul was. I believe this was the 14th chapter of Acts. And Paul saw this man. He was born and could never walk. And he had a limp. You know, his leg was a feeble. And it says, Paul, beholding him, perceived that the man had faith to be healed. But the man was still sitting there. So Paul said, in the name of Jesus, activating his faith, he says, arise and walk in the name of the Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And the man stood up and he leaped in the air and walked. There's something about knowing that you believe first. And a change comes back. This word beholding is in the New Testament an awful lot of times. It says, Paul beholding him saw and perceived that he had faith to be healed. There's a verse in Corinthians that says, we are changed by beholding the glory of the Lord from glory to glory, and it's by the Holy Spirit that this is done. This is in 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 3, verse 18. So when there is beholding going on, as we look at ourselves and behold and see things, we can see ourselves healed, as Paul says in Romans, whereby we 
uh, call those things that be not as though they were. That's believing before seeing. We have a great example of the other way around with Doubting Thomas. He says, I won't believe that he rose until I see the holes in his hands and stick my hand in his side. That's why we call him Doubting Thomas. But once he saw that, that's what we do in the world now. I'll believe it when I see it. Then he fell to his knees and said, my Lord and my God. What a transformation. But God wants us. He says, blessed are those, Thomas, who having believed have not even seen me. And that's what we are today, to believe in that way. Jesus also says, let not your heart be troubled. He says, my peace I give unto you, not like the world gives it unto you. Now, how does the world give you peace? The peace comes to your heart. He doesn't say, let not your heart be troubled about a job. Let not your heart be troubled about circumstances. Let not your heart be troubled by your friends. He says, guard your heart. Paul says that in Philippians 2, guard your heart. And in Proverbs it says, for out of the heart flow the issues of life. So when your heart is troubled, there's a blockage in terms of peace. But Jesus, when he gives you his peace, he says, my peace I give unto you. It is like a peace that we do not understand and it cannot be blocked because it's a peace of the heart, not a peace of the emotions. It's a peace of the heart. And we know that we are a tripartite being. Tripartite being, by Paul says that in Thessalonians. He says, we are spirit, body, and soul. On the word, on the, on, in the world, we say this the other way. Soul, body, and spirit. Like body and soul. But it's in the Bible, in the New Testament, at least three times or two times that I know of. It says spirit, body, and soul. So, once we get that correct, our emotions are straight. Your emotions cannot control you. Your heart does. There was a movie once where uh, there was a heart transplant. With this heart transplant, the person that received the heart started acting like the person that had it before that died. And it's kind of something to that in terms of out of the heart does flow issues. This is something that is supernatural, but we have a supernatural God that ministers to our heart. When he says heart, he means heart. Soul, he means intellect and emotions. But he says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, also believe in me. And the peace that I give you is not like the peace that the world has. It's a different kind of shalom peace. That is a quieting peace, like when he spoke to the ocean and he said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. And they said there was a great calm. And it goes back to faith, as Jesus then turned to his disciples and says, O oh, ye of little faith. So in total healing, we're talking about having the faith to believe before it happens. The last example I will give happened just in our Monday night prayer at church for healing. And a man came up to me and he had like a withered hand and a shoulder. They had operated on his neck, but it tore something or a tendon that made his hand so he could not move it or his arm. I called another believer over with me, a Dr. Mike Slocum, and we laid hands on him. And I could feel my hand on top and under the bottom of his hand, I felt the tendon moving. And then a word of knowledge came to talk to him about his son. And he, he wanted to know now what that have to do with his hand. But we just listened to the Lord. And what the Lord was worried about, or could not worried, but concerned about, was his son was not saved. I did not know that, neither did Dr. Mike. But he told us that was happening. So I had Dr. Mike pray for his son's salvation for him to come to the Lord as we would lift him up and Jesus would draw all men nigh to him. Then we continued to pray for his hand. And it's almost like 
He didn't believe before, so there was a, like a partial healing because he was looking for a, quote, magician's trick. Come up, fix my hand, and I'm gone. He says, oh, how did you know that? Okay, I got to go. I said, before you go, stretch forth your hand. He says, I can't do it. I said, stretch forth your hand. He did it, and he moved his finger. He says, I haven't been able to move this finger since the surgery where they went paralyzed. If we would have stayed there, I know that Jesus would have completed the whole thing. He would have completed the whole thing. So I looked at him and I said, don't lose your healing in the parking lot. Do not go out and let the devil tell you that even your finger did not move because we both saw it. We are witnesses. What we're saying is believe before you receive. And then you will have it. The Lord says, if you ask anything believing in my name before the Father, he will give it to you. Amen. And First John says, if you ask believing according to the will of God, he will believe. He will give it to you. So that's what we want to just put into your spirit and drop into your heart and let it rise up and live big in you. Now, my guest today is Jana Bain, and uh, Jana uh, was in our, uh, she was one of the managers of our uh, cafe at church. And uh, will you explain what happened, because you had headaches for about, what, six weeks? Or six days, six I'm Six days. Saying. Yeah. Um, our mutual friend, Earl, uh -huh. um, was there with us, and um, he worked in the cafe with me. And um, I'd just been talking to him about oh, these headaches, like they just won't go away, you know, a lot of pain in my head, and it was causing, you know, um, temperament issues and different things, disrupting the home, different, because I just couldn't function. My head hurt so bad. Um, and I've suffered for, with migraines for many, many years, mm -hmm. um, and they'd been under control for a long time um, and had just recently started surfacing when I started undergoing a lot of um, stress in my life. And um, I uh, just kept talking to Earl. And you were meeting with him. Mm -hmm. You come in and meet with him. And I always come over and greet you. And so one of the highlights of my week was, was getting to see you guys and, and just have those little moments of fellowship with you guys. And, and I'd walked over there. And, um, and you'd asked how I was doing. And I mentioned my headaches. And... and um, you guys offered to pray for me, and uh, we stood there right there in the cafe, and you guys laid hands on me, and believe you had, your hand was on my forehead, or else was on my shoulder, and, and you guys be, began praying, and I remember feeling just this sense of um, comfort, mm -hmm. like all was well. Mm -hmm. um, as you guys were praying, the pain started subsiding, Praise God. bits and bits, you know, like I could feel, I was like, oh. You just feel the tension kind of draining me and just and being filled with, with hope that, okay, I'm going to survive this. I, I'm good. God's mm -hmm. got this. Um, but Jesus is more then, than enough. And he he is more than enough. And in the middle of all of that, all of a sudden, you started praying for my kidneys. <laughs> and I seriously remember thinking, this man is crazy. <laughs> I asked him to pray for my headaches, and he's praying for my kidneys. And I was just like, okay. Take it or leave it, just, you know, whatever. And finished out my shift. I went home, and I was in a lot, a lot of pain the whole rest of that night. And um, it was probably really early in the morning, late at night, early, early morning, like after midnight-ish. I would gotten up to go to the restroom, and it was the most painful trip I've ever had in my life, going to the restroom. I thought I was dying. Um, I was just floored, just like, what is going on? Lo and behold, that night I passed kidney stones. Glory to God. Yeah. And so I, I remember standing there and thinking, okay, Pastor Philip is not crazy. <laughs> and I could not wait. I knew you would be in the cafe the next day, and I could not wait to get to work and to be able to tell you, oh, my gosh, you're not going to believe this miracle. You're not going to believe what happened. You know, my headache's gone, mm -hmm. and there was a bonus feature. 
Yes. So praise God for that. Yes, he always makes us whole. And I looked up what they have to do, and it's called a lithotripter. And it's a device uh, that when you put the patient in a tub of water, it sends out waves, and it goes in, and it explodes the stones into smaller pieces so they can be passed you know, through the, the urine tract. And God did that without a lifter tractor. He just did it, and, and it surprised you, and it surprised, yeah. <laughs> surprised your body. And the thing about the lifter tractor, though, is that uh, if it misses, it hits something else, and it explodes a hole in it. So it has to be aimed correctly. But uh, Jesus saved so much in terms of uh, that pain, yeah. And in terms of uh, those medical bills, yeah. just in terms of the joy to know that he's the great I am, not the great I was. So we are just excited about her healing of passing a kidney stone uh, without any medical attention. Only the great physician, Jesus, was at work in her life. Praise so God. she had faith because she asked for the healing of headaches. But God likes to do more. He always does like to do more. Let's uh, take communion here. I have found that over the years that after you take communion, something happens and people just get healed. That happened with the man in the wheelchair. There was a lady that uh, rode in to another uh, show or program that said she took communion every day and she had four uh, cancer in the fourth degree or the fourth time, or whatever they would call it. Stage four. four. Stage four, thank you. And she took it every day. Jesus says, take it often in remembrance of me. This is the blood of the new covenant. And she was healed of cancer just by taking communion, the blood and the, the body of Christ. Praise God. So we will take the bread and we will reflect for a moment on examining ourselves, examining just what he did for us with his stripes there, as he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent on the pole, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And this was uh, in John chapter 3. So he took the bread when he went to the disciples at the Passover, and he blessed it and he broke it. And he says, take this, this is the new covenant, and he, they all partook. And then he took the cup, and he says, drink of this. This is my blood. This blood could cleanse all things, leprosy, cancer, all things, basically all sin. Praise God. I'm now going to pray for you. There is a man in Australia that is hearing me now, the sound of my voice. You have trouble in your ear. In fact, it's both ears. And we speak to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say, deaf ears be made open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be open. We pray for any sickness or any disease that you heal, that you have, because the Lord, the, the Bible records that Jesus healed all manner of sickness and disease. You know, there were 39 stripes that he received. The doctors tell us that any disease that has ever been discovered can be put in one of 39 characteristics. So in one of 39 characteristics with his 39 stripes, we are healed. I thank you, Father, that you are Lord of all. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. We bless your name this day. We thank you and we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. I want to thank you, Jenna, for being on the program and that 
May your testimony be very good for other people and to give them faith that as they're prayed for, other things will happen to them besides exactly what they're prayed for, that there's always a bonus with Jesus. Even as he fed the 5,000, there were baskets left over. And with the 4,000, there were baskets left over. There's always more than enough. See you next time, and God bless you.